That's the top of the block. That's the top. That's the bottom. What I'll do is, if I'm laying block, and your helpers out there, they'll stand the block up this way. They lay all, they lay all the hidden tops that way. So when I head the block up, right? Mm -hmm. All I'll do is this one here. Like that. So I'll go ahead and grab it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. see what it is. Mm -hmm. If you notice that, it's a rib right here. So that's a rib, see it? Mm -hmm. It goes around. It's for you to lay it with one hand. Uh, you can tote that block. You can't tote that block on the other side. Too it'll slip out your hand. Yeah. It'll, say, it'll slip right out your fingers. But I hear it won't because it's got that notch in it. See it? So, and you always say, lay your block away, and then you say, and you got your trial to help pick it up. See the bottom of it? Yeah. And then you just set it right in place. All we do is we cut the bag in half. This is water that we used. Yep, so I start off with green leaf and water. Then I pour my half bag of concrete in. Start my mixer up. I pull it down like this to make sure that everything comes off the back wall so I don't end up with a bunch of sand stuck in the back mm -hmm. when I dump it into the wheelbarrow. Now you see it's starting to do this. Mm -hmm. it's starting to ball up. That that's means you need you, more water? That's what you're looking for. That's oh. what you it'll start doing that. But you want it to do that. You want it to circulate and keep doing that because as it's mixing, there's a lot more water in there than you think. It only takes a very little bit of water to ruin your concrete, especially when you're laying block. Block is heavy, so your concrete has to be thick. But as you will notice, I'm just gonna take a little bit of water at a time. Little more balls in there now. It's almost turning where everything's a ball. Now watch this. It's going to be amazing when it changes. You're going to think, oh, it still needs some more water, and all of a sudden it's going to be right. back wall. Then when it gets to that, I don't want to add it out of the bucket. Because if I slip and get just a little bit yeah. too much, it'll ruin it that fast. I mean, it's crazy how fast it'll turn. Most, most concrete, people are, are learning how to mix concrete, this is where they mess up. They add just a hair too much water. And then you gotta add more of your mix, more of your sand, in the wheelbarrow, you can do it by hand. You want this to where it just barely mushes. When you, when you squeeze it, it barely leaves a trace on your fingers. And that feels right. That's good, nice mud. It's still thick. Lay a block in it. Now I just let it sit there and mix for a second.
right here. I'll just do some crazy stuff, you know. I'll, this is just something simple, okay? This is where I'm going to be at. Set my center mark. And that's probably too wide, but it's going to be 28. I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna take it and thin it in. See, all I want to do is get a line going across, get me started. They don't have to be perfect because this line here is gonna be for the box to go in. And I, all I got to do is loud about two inches from my room. And what I'm doing is right here, I'm trying to get it's the same height. So everything right here, see, I'm just net loud about you see, I'm loud about an inch or two right there. Right here, I'm loud an inch or two inches. I'm gonna say an inch and a half, inch three quarters. Because a brick ain't, but you know, two and a quarter of these are, two and a quarter fire bricks like two inches. But it, what we normally use is an inch brick. The little ones in the boxes. So we can buy them with either size when that goes. They're all the same price. Uh, uh, I got a lot of hard work to do to it. Right? A little slow work, and them boys don't realize that. I reckon Johnny and them knows it. Uh, but most people don't know it. Any time. Yep. I'm gonna cut a seven inch piece. Now this is how we do these seven inch pieces. Go ahead. We'll do some tricks to the trade. We're gonna take this up in a minute. This little bow here. But I don't want nothing on this bow. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to get nothing on it. But what happens is the box goes right here on this. And this is where the box is gonna be put in. Right in this area. And all you do is you come here. That doesn't matter. Everything getting filled up. So this is basically gonna take and uh. I'm getting my four foot level, buddy. <coughs> Excuse me. This is going to take an uh, be filled up. All oh, this will be filled up. No. Actually, when I get so high, I take sack creek and I pour in there. High strength sack creek. And I pour all that stuff full. Especially now next to the box, around the box. <laughs> and this is not where wood's at. But when we're doing something where a lot of wood's at, really, we make sure it's all solid, real solid. If you're outside on a fireplace, I still pour mine because I've been doing it that way all forever. So all we do is we make sure everything's plumb, level, and we just leave it like that. And when I come do my fancy brick on it, that's when you see the work. You know what I'm saying? That's when all your work's gonna come out in. It. Yep. Now all I do is. I'm gonna split a block for the back side. That or either wise measure one for here. I can go straight across with one here. I got enough room to use an eight almost. A seven. Well six is better. Better. But I'd rather use my daggone block sideways here and put it in here, Tom. Just put it in here sideways and fill the back side up. Hand me a six inch block. Right quick back. Let me see if it'll fit. If it'll fit, I'll do that. And we use brick ties. These brick ties are tight. 
Okay, this is the slow part. That's why I don't usually bang a whole bunch of people when I do the slow stuff. Because there's no sense in it. You do, you just, you're killing yourself. All right, that's what I'm going to do right there. Just like that. Watch what happens. I'm going to trick and trade. This right here is, uh, this is what they call guts in the fireplace, you know? This this guts in the fireplace. This is the guts of how one goes up. And what we're doing, see, is make sure we fit it. You see what I'm saying? That fit perfectly. I had to cut that little piece out mm -hmm. of here. Now this here get filled with brick or whatever, you know, in here. Boom, boom, boom. And then we go to another level. Uh, everything is kind of like, it's a lot of doctoring. Basically, I'm a doctor. I'm a surgeon. <laughs> I, I, I do different types of things. I build swimming pools and all fountains. I do I did about 10 fountains for Dick Stewart. I'll say 10. I did about six of them for him. The fountains are your most fun, aren't uh, they? Yeah, Dinner. fountains are. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I do it on River Road. For the Mr. Watkins. And it's beautiful. You seen that one on River Road? Lower Mount Mercy. That's pretty fountain. No. That's, that's one of the prettiest ones I've ever built. I, I've really done a good thing on that one. When I've done, I've done a different design the way I normally do them. Now, always when you're doing something, you find a better way of doing them. And, uh, and that's when anything you do. And as you do them all the time, you find out that, hey, now see, there's four inches right here. Watch what happens here. This is only, this is four inches here, right? Then it's going to go, and it's going to be out to here, and then it's going to turn, right? So if it's going to turn, I can bring this one out, some like that. And the reason being, the slope needs to be back from here. You see what I'm saying? The slope needs to be back from there to there. And what you do is like right here. See that stuff? I'm just trying to make it look like everything's going to be right where it's at. It's going to be built the same way. And I feel that full, see? And what this does is this brings that point within four inches of where I'm going to be at. I'm going to be at four inches, which is right here. So my fire brick will be four inches coming up here and then I have another time to it. So I'm just bringing that block out to make it uh, more uniform. And then you feel these up, they don't move. You, know, you lock everything in. You don't ever want to do something that's not locked in. A lot of people just throw stuff together and don't lock nothing in. You get stuff moves. Me, what I do is I put wire. You see wire every other course? Mm -hmm. I put wire every other course because that's the code to masonry if you do any type of masonry. You don't want to use that wire. Wire helps hold it together on, on anything. So you pull your block cells, the wire's got it. If you don't do that, it don't. You wind up with nothing. Material in it that they couldn't put in as they was going. We try to do it. Keep it like It don't take much to fill it. You just got to fill it and throw mud. Don't worry about how it, how it sets as long as it's mason. A lot of people take a lot of time with stuff. The old man taught me. To do make you just do it solid and keep going with it. And don't take a lot of time messing with it. You're welcome, man. Because you won't make no money out of it. You got to know how to put it together. That's why it takes a lot of brick for these things. <laughs> it takes a lot of brick for them too. I'm not lying. I'll spend about eight, nine hundred brick in this one chimney. And what I do is I actually... What, what, 800 what? 100? 800. Yeah, brick. This is 300 brick we got now. We'll waste these up today on it. Mm -hmm. Now I say waste them up. They're about a dollar twenty cent a piece now. They done went up. Like everything else has. And they don't, that's what they don't realize is things will go up, you know. And if you did something last year and started this year, it's hard to go up. <laughs> yeah, you know it's hard. It's hard to go up, man. You just have to kind of get them in there. That area where it's a feel, you know. Yeah. And what I do is I fill them up. This mud gets so strong when it hardens up. Oh, this stuff ain't don't move. <laughs> and this this mud is something I had. This is a really expensive mud. This it, mud is like twenty dollars a bag. Twenty dollars a bag. With the type S is like fourteen. This is rated like a type S. It's expensive mud also. Uh, but I had it for another job, some of it. And I'm just using it up. Normally I wouldn't use this color, I would use a gray. 
But since I had some left over, I'm just using my leftover mud. And it's more expensive mud, actually. But by the time I use it somewhere else, it'll be dried up and wouldn't be no good hardly. So you try to use it as you go. They're not going to do much. <laughs> Let's see what you do here. You do this down here. You always tie this, this together. These are going to be poured. This is not going to go anywhere. This goes here. That's going to lock in. That's going to be mud over. It's not going to go anywhere. You see, I got ties already in here. See, ties already mm -hmm. in here. I got ties laid in. I lay everything in when I go because I don't like to have no problems. And even though I do this here number two, see, ties I ain't with a diamond up. Well, these are expensive too, but when it comes to safety and your name's on it, then <laughs> with your name's on it, it ain't nothing but a 10, 20 cent right there. So, and the owners pay for it anyhow. But, they go, but you know, I'm not going to not do it right for them. If I got the materials here, I'm going to throw them in there. What's, what's the, this this part here? This rebar here is for all your corners. You're drilling on all your corners. And you pull that with sack tape. It's drilling with epoxy about four inches deep. And we do it from like moving. If a storm comes, it won't wiggle it. If your corners are poured, it won't move. Blocks don't normally move anyhow. Old days, you never see none hardly move. They're the last thing. They're the only thing standing. But the new days come up, they won't rebar and everything. And two courses of wire, uh, course of wire, every other course. That's the code. So if we don't do it by code, and they come in and make us tear it down. And that's, and, you know, and you want to do it by code, okay? Especially on anywhere you go. <laughs> and me, it's this rebar. You can't get it out the ground, out of there. And when I go, I'll tie to this right here. I won't go no higher until I tie to it. I'll drop down about a foot and tie to it right here and go up a little higher. That's why we leave them a little higher than what they normally are. This is the cap of this wall. This wall won't go no higher. And I hear it slow, but that's why I told him I'm gonna do the slow stuff now. That's gonna go up two foot eight inches high. Uh, this is. Yeah, record, man. Yes, sir. It's gonna be 14 inches off this floor. Actually, it's gonna be 12 inches high. The hearth is. Uh, but we're doing 14 inches up to the floor line here. And the reason by because we're gonna put stone on the floor, and stone's probably gonna be an inch and a half, two inches. So we allow for that two inches. So that way we still gonna have 12 by the time we throw it and finish. You know, everything got to be counted for. You're doing this all in your head. Oh yeah, I, I, I get everything, I already got everything in my mind where I already see it. I see a whole fireplace here. Basically when you do masonry, if you don't see it, you can't do it. Uh, and that's why a lot of people, that, that people, they study too much. If you can't see the job before you get to the job, you really ain't that good at it. <laughs> You've got to study it when you're going, you're in trouble. If you, normally you try to study at nighttime, coming to the job, with your, your head screwed right. Uh, because if it's not, then you'll sit here all day long and you're wasting money with your guys out there. Guys take more money, they'll, they'll eat the money up quick. People will eat the money up. And uh, so you got to kind of be on point. Two foot eight is going to be like see from that box. Or 28 inches, excuse mm -hmm. me. It's not two foot eight, it's two, 28 inches. 20 inches is right here. So I'm going up one, two, three more blocks. And then I cross over right here with a lintel. And I normally put a lintel about an inch higher because the fact is, when you put the stone or something on it, they're going to hang it down about a half inch or three quarters because they want to hide that metal. You, want mm -hmm. that, you got to hide that metal or you'll see it sitting down out here. And uh, so I'll make sure I'm an inch higher. And if you can do an arch, three inch arch, I'll do it four inches higher. And I will ask John him that before I get that high. Is that is Joel going to have an arch in it? So if he's going to have an arch in it, I'll go four inches high. That leaves him enough room to do a three inch arch and you got an inch clearance. But if you have a straight face on it, I'll be an inch high. But them things to be known, I'll be knowing that before I get to that point. Yeah. Wait a minute, go ahead, go ahead. What? So this is done here now. I yeah. went all the way back to there. I got to cut another block to go here. Yeah. And it's going to be a, a weird shaped block. If you notice it, it's in the back side. You're going to see something weird shaped here. Um, but it's kind of, you know, I can do them either way. You know what I'm saying? Um, so what I'm looking at here, since I went all the way back with that one, right? I'm looking at one here about four inches, right, in the back. And your back is going to be four inches, right? Mm. Yes, sir. That's how I have to do it. You watch what happens. I'm pretty smooth. It takes a lot of time to cut. I'm pretty good. Four inches at least.
Sometimes you don't want you know where you don't break right. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you do it. It's gonna look good, you know. I that already. So you can make a box in a day. Any day. I, I well see the box will be the last thing I put in. And I don't see a lot of people don't know how to do it like I do it. A lot of you have to build a box. You see some company they'll build a box as they go because they don't know how to close over them without doing that. See, I learned from an older guy that done this thing. He said, man, you take up more time with trying to build that box. You wait on a rainy day and come do that box with one guy. You don't be out here with all you guys trying to build a box. They all stand here watching you spending money like spending money. And uh, so you made up, he said, you take two uh, eights and twelves and you get to the top with a damper that you lay an eight and a 12 to close it up and you get your damper in. So you can go ahead and build your throat. Then you come back and put your box in under it. And nobody's ever figured that out until you see me do it. Now everybody's starting to do that. I didn't even see Mason go up and start copycatting what I already got done. Because they'll come by my job site and see how I've done it. And they take a picture of it and then they go back. Oh, that's how you done that. I didn't know you done this box last. <laughs> yeah, nut. <laughs> Basically, that's going to work out pretty. See that? And I ain't got no problem with that. I can deal with that. I can mud to here. I got fire brick going to there. So I got a good inch and a half or so from the block. And everything here can be tied to here. Everything's tied to brick tied like you do here. Just never, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just, it's really people just wanting to work. I mean, hell. I can't find nobody wanting to go to work. I don't want to be lazy. But I guess that's how, like I said, they all getting crazy check. Do you have trouble getting guys to work with you? Yeah, well, I'm having trouble with finding help because everybody wants to not work. I mean, everybody wants to, they all get a uh, stimulatus check. If the government don't quit giving them a check, they ain't never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> tell you, people, did, when they say, well, why work? You get this much at home. Yeah, I, I understand that, but eventually that's going to run out, son. They don't just, they ain't going to give you money forever. <laughs> that money ain't going to last long. I got so many people I'm supposed to go see, like, that likes me to do their work, that I can't really get to them. And they nice people. But. Cause I do a lot of work for John, you know. Mm -hmm. And there, if John calls me, I'll leave what I'm doing and go do it. Cause I've been with him so long. Yeah, I know he's, his ticks never bounced. And uh, never had no problem about getting paid. Some of these contractors won't pay you. They'll take the money and run. Because the ones I was, that's 15, 20 years ago. The bad ones I met. They weren't no good. And they was on this island working. I built, a, I built, I built places to send me church. I built places to send me church. Right there on Paris Island? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I built that church and done all the uh, concrete, everything. The auditorium. Uh, and I worked with him. During the summertime, for when I went to service, I come back out of service. I went right back into masonry, and because he needed somebody to do it for him, and he said, "Dennis, you know it in a year." <laughs> uh, you know, well, because I'm not no dummy, I can figure it out. You know, people can't figure out stuff. You take some people and let them do it 20 years and still can't figure it out. When they're sitting there, still can't figure. It out. So that's just how anything to do. If, if you want to learn it, if you don't want to learn it, you're not going to learn it. Uh, but see, I lock it in, and I just do stuff I know is not going to move. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This right here, I know is not going to be a no, uh, I can take those seven out of the way right this second. I know that that's not going to uh, go anywhere. And what's it going to burn? You know what I'm saying? Yep. Well, people don't realize that a lot of times, it's not going to burn nothing anyhow because the fact is, Sitting right here. It's, on, it's all made from. There's no wood to it. And that, I can't believe they built isochronic zero paint. And, and they trust them things more than they trust them what I got. 
I can always do a stack here, it don't matter. I can run one just the way it doesn't matter. Um, because this is all inside the box. You know, it ain't nothing no different, ain't nothing changed. Nothing's changed but the weather. And the weather got nice today. And all I do is I just try to stay off the gas line because I don't want to mess the gas line up. You sit down there. And when you do that, you know, you, these things are all filled. So the good thing about this part is it ain't the pretty part. It's the part that you put in there and you just get it in there. I know how to put the easy work together. It's not a, it's not a rocket scientist to figure this out. You don't take no college degree, even though I got a college education. Level one plum. You know, I did graduate. I did go to college two years, but uh, I went to college for welder. I was a welder. And I met up with this girl, that was a, her dad was a mason. <laughs> that messed me up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe but, it didn't. But I still weld. I still weld good. I weld anything I need. Yep. So I'm glad of that. And see what you do here, here sir? Now it's just a filling situation, see? And once you see it all fill and you side that there so smoothly, some people don't do it like that. But that's how smooth Randall can do it. You see that in it? Now, what we're doing here is we can go over some more fill. These boxes filled also. You'll see around this box, they get done good. And what I do is, I'm trying to get them in there, but they, they heavy now. You know, I ain't that old, but I used to be a lot faster. But now I'm slow. I'm slow, but on point. <laughs> it's, it's, I, I like to do it right. You know, I like to see it go up that. Especially if I, my name's on it. Now, if your name's on it, it won't bother you. <laughs> I got nothing. I know. He don't this care. is J <laughs> he don't care. JJ, JJ's fireplace. JJ, no, JJ got a nice one too now. I've done JJ's probably 25, 30 years ago. <laughs> and yeah, you know, I was a young man then, but I still build them right because the guy that taught me, I ain't never changed the way I done them. Who'd you, know? you who'd you learn from? Uh, John Jones. He built the biggest he done the park downtown Charleston. That big fountain and all. Mm -hmm. I helped him on that fountain, but at the time me and him broke up broke up. I broke up partners. Well, I worked partners with him. I worked for him about 15 years. At the time that fountain started downtown Charleston, and that park and all, his son done the whole park and all, and he done the fountain. And I quit on that job and went down my own. Is that wire there? Mm -hmm. I want that wire to be on there. I want that wire rocket. <laughs> so that wire locks everything I do. When I get through with it, see, another course here, see that locks there? Mm -hmm. I don't. That, I'm locking everything I do, so it's like so much lock, a bulldozer wouldn't take it down. Uh, now, now, all I do here is this right here. Let me show you something right here. That's kind of quick to the trick. I can go right here and straighten it out, right? Like I can say, well, that's going to be 11 inches. I know, so on like 10 and 3 quarters. That's going to be 10 and 3 quarters. That's going to probably be a 12 and a half. 10 and 3 quarters, 12 and a half. 10 and 3 quarters, and an 8 inch knot. Right there. Okay, 10 and 3 quarters, 12 and a half. Right? And you just go like 10 and 3 quarters, right? 10 and 3 quarters, right? 12 and a half. And you just say, so I'm, I can draw now. <laughs> you know, like 10 and 3 quarters. And I say 12 and a half or something like that. Uh, 12 and a half, boom. 12 and a half, boom. And I get it close, you know. I don't want to get dust on that, but it's not fair. Because I just know how to make a custom. Now, I think I want to take the six inch block and cut it in there. And that's probably what I will do if I got enough room here. So, uh, let me see if I get this taped in there. Okay, there you go. Let's see what I got here. I got five, five and five eighths. It won't work. 
That's no problem. All I need is a four and a half. Thank you. That's it. That's it. That should be it. What happens is this goes on that. Or like that. It doesn't matter. Either one. It's tighter the other way, so I like it the other way better. So what I do is I get it all out like that. Take my sear things. You know, if you ain't good at what you're doing fast at what you do, you won't get this stuff here done. <laughs> That's why this stuff paid like it does. To get to get I'm saying you got to are you, you know, paid by the job or by the hour? Oh, I'll do it by the job. By the hour, you got to, <laughs> I'd, have to, I'd be like a doctor. You wouldn't, you might spend more money by the hour on me. <laughs> uh, and even though I'm fast at it, but still yet, it's just, a, it's a lot of work to it. It's best to do, uh, and that's materials and labor. But if you don't have that, you got to at least get that to make a living on it. You see what materials cost and this stuff, and you say, oh my goodness, see, you might want to be a liar. <laughs> And that's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> but that was last year's prices. <laughs> I'm telling you, everything's going up. And the reason being because the economy's going up right now. Fuel. Fuel, fuel everything. Price. Well, fuel price keeps going up. You can't make no money with, without doing it. And the government ain't going to give me that by home. And I don't know, though. I mean, everybody else gets stimulus checks. Or stimulus not us. They call it stimulus, Tom. Stimulitis, yeah. Stimulitis, what Tom called it. Stimulitis. That's when they get the stimulus check and they refuse to come to work. Now you see how I done that, sir? Excuse me, right there. You see that, right? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. You ain't gonna worry about all that, <laughs> ain't it? You seen it already? Okay. See how fast that was? Now all you do now is just here. The same thing. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot of fixing. Now what happens is the next portion is gonna hold it. You know. Because once you do here, you always get in there. This is gonna be a, this is gonna be one of those, just you'll make sure it stays right, tight. Tell you right, tell you right. And see, even though I got a lot out there, I'll be out there in there too. And you get that mother hole in you gotta be good. But then then you gotta slide it in tightly. That thing got fit good and tight. That looks, I don't mess around with it, I get it right. Okay? And then all you do is, that's it. And you do this right over here. You do have a pencil mark on the back drawed up, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't got to. You see it? Uh -huh. <laughs> it's just, uh, it just fits, huh? While that, are you about to cut me ends off of one? And then, and then, uh, put a piece in the back. And that's probably what I do. I'll talk about that 8-inch block over there. I got to cut them down like that. Here, yes, sir. You see, I'll cut them like that. Yeah, uh, and what happens is, when these all laid in, we throw ties, we throw these ties right here on everything locked in. Like, say, I'll lock that in. Even though I'm not here, I'll lock this in the same way. Everything in my box get locked in, but I hurt nothing to lock them in. Time, die, they're a dime a dozen. Well, I'll say that now, they're about a quarter a piece, probably. Or 20 cents, because these things are galvanized. And if you look at the price of stuff now, go, go, go at Lowe's and just and see what two before was yesterday. And what they are today, they ought to run up $2. The two uh, mortgage was $250 something other, 94 dollars 60 or so for two before. I mean, that's just overnight. Uh -huh. I mean, what the hell? <laughs> you ain't gonna afford nothing. The block. That's the bottom of the block. Is that narrow it is? Okay, so if I'm gonna lay it this way, this is gonna be the this is gonna be the back side. The other one will be further out. So this one would be. Here, let me give you a different block. This, that, I'm gonna have it going toward the back, so it don't matter. Yeah, but this side's all shipped up, bro. Yeah, that's going to the back side. It don't matter. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's much better. I can deal with that. I can make that work. That's how you do it. The same way, you know, you have to keep locking the gun. It don't take a rocket scientist, like I said, but it does take some knowing how. And the thing that is, when I get through it, it's like, it looks real good. Everything's solid. You don't have to worry about it coming apart because everything I tie is together. 
don't need nothing untied. <laughs> it don't have to be locked. I like to lock stuff together. See? This way, it's got something to rest against. And if people don't realize that, but that's the way it needs to be. When I get through with it, it's like, she says, damn, he's a doctor. Well, I don't want have been doing it 40 years. I built so much different things. You all see some of the fountains I built downtown Beaufort? Huh? Yeah, I do all kinds of fountains. I'm a fountain king. <laughs> How easy that is. And what I do is I normally just try to stay off a little bit. But I got a tie right there, see. My problem got that tie was right there at it. I love it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that, that's the best spot that tie could have went. Um this is gonna work perfect too. Boom. Okay. Uh certain things I fill in, you'll see how they go in there say, you say, oh my god, how do you do that so quick? How do you do that so fast, Randolph? Well, I'm gonna show you how I built. I used to build pits and all real quick. I'm the best built pit there is around this thing, around this place. People tell you that they've ever seen, ever seen my work. You see how I do that? Anything that's filled don't really hurt. They don't hurt it. You know what I'm saying? So you just gotta be careful. See, I got my wire right at. You see that? You always see that, don't you? The lintel is made with a steel beam. Oh, sure we do. There's a cut one here somewhere. I think it's right here, right? right there, yep. Mm -hmm. He's back. Ready? Yes, sir. Grab. Huh? Yeah, what we have to do is, is make a little, it's going to be like a picture frame. And what we're gonna do is, is make it look like a picture frame. When we get through with it, you know? Everything, everything, it's like Roman Empire. It wasn't built in a day, you know? He's built in 100 years. I love it, baby. Yeah, it was built in 100 years, so it wasn't built in no day. Always tie these together because but that way it's all locked in. Great. You'd think the cement would do the job. Yeah, it's best to go ahead and lock it in. Then you have not to lock it in. If not, then you have a problem. What what is this down here? All these This is a recess end down here for like a picture frame? We recess it in two inches, so when you stuck it, it's got a recess in like the, all the arches they got on the house. And they'll have a two inch recess. When I get up here, I'll cut the block and make it an arch. When I get up top higher, I'll have to, what I'll do is lay the block straight, and I'll come back and draw an arch on them and cut them out. And that way you got an arch. And then stucco man a frame, tell me, just stucco to that. I would, I, I'll build an arch for it. I'll build an arch. It's like the garage door there. Just look like, like the garage door. Right? Have it for just one day. That's the way it works. One day. In the world. I'd be happy. Now, see, you, you got to be kind of strong, too. A lot of people ain't as strong as old Randolph is. You better believe that. Tell him, Tom. I look like I'm not strong, but when I grab a hold of something, this is usually mine. I uh, don't play. I quit school because of that. No, I graduated. <laughs> I graduated high school. I went. I even went to college. Two years. Out there with me. 
going out mm -hmm. on the water a couple times, huh? Yep. Yeah. See oh, what we're doing down here is I'm just job. building. I'm building a chase. I'm gonna have to build a throat. So you gotta have your whole solid here for your eight to break the gut and make a good throat. Make a throat out the dinner time. I'll talk to the throat, put the damper in. But right here, you just do bricks and right in here. Fill this in like I done that side. Parge it up. By the time I get uh, 11 inches high, I'll set my damper. You go 10 to 11 inches high because you want that damper pin when you let the pin down. You don't want to be able to see the pin on in here. So some people put some six and seven in the pin. When you drop the pin, you see the pin. But you're supposed to be able to hide the pin. And nine or 10 inches will hide it. Anything lower than that won't. And if you look up any chimney, you'll see them nine or 10 inches high. You won't see them real low. What do you, how do you make a chimney draw? You got to have your throat within four foot of the, uh, of the flue. You don't want to choke it down and uh, have your, uh, your, your box too, too shallow as far as like you mm -hmm. open here. Mm -hmm. When this throat comes up, it's got to be up at least four foot high. Close into a 12 by 12. You can't go into it like a one and a half, two and a half, but it'll choke it down too much. And then what happens is the smoke builds up and rolls back out. You gotta have a big enough smoke chamber in there to hold it until it gets a chance to go up. And, and since we got an outside fireplace, we won't need no vent out here. If there's inside of a house, we put an air vent, but there's enough air out here that we won't need it. Um, and it don't matter how that goes there, you know? You just got to throw it in. I see how I done that. That just gets packed full. Then I lose a layer six right here. And it should be right. I just I usually just mud it, you know. Instead of having to try to hit them up, I'll mud them in out there. Now always I usually just butt them back up again to make sure they stick good. And then you just set your block on there. And then go back again. Tom, get me that line block on the other side. Just drop that line down. And I'll see how good I am on this part. I, I hadn't checked it with a line yet. But I'm pretty well good with my eye. I got these new glasses on. And they kind of work with me. You got a new prescription? Yes, sir. I had to go to the doctor and get them. But you know one thing I couldn't understand about the doctor? Some doctors ain't as good as others. Um, Let me get, he got me so much right here, we're on top of me. But I can fill this in right here, see? Uh, I could have done that already. But I had so much going on that sometimes. You know, you take these brick and you put them in here like that. It don't matter if that brick is it's just for the throat and we're gonna hard everything up. And that way no smoke comes through. You'll notice I'll start coming out with them. Uh -huh. This box is coming out. My throat, my bricks gonna start coming out that way. So regardless of what I do, I can do it. Watch here. What you do is you break that brick on that, right? And then you come here. It's like it's like a doctor, really. And a doctor knows what to do with a hand or uh, your surgery, you know. If he don't, he ain't no good doctor. You know Dr. Sullivan? No. Why don't you mind new him? He's a hand doctor. He's a real good guy. Him and Kathy Sullivan. Matter of fact, I got to go to the house. I haven't went there yet. They got some work for me over there. This Kathy wants to keep me busy. I done their whole house about 25 years ago, mm -hmm. 20 years ago. About the time I did yours. About the time I done your, your work. And everything works out perfect. 14, buddy. You're good, buddy. What you do is you just fill these in like that. Nothing happens to them. And when I get this thing for the throat, and you get good exercise when you finish that. You see how that box got top and the bottom? So I can hold that box. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's the top of yeah. it. There's the top and the bottom to yeah. the block. So you want to make sure that you lay the top up. 
study to spread your muds a little wider bed. Holds the next block up. I don't tell everybody that. Especially if you're a mason, I wouldn't tell you. Because <laughs> if you don't know, I wouldn't let you know anyhow. The sun and all. And uh, I had my, my wife's name was, her CB hunter was uh, Little Darn. And my CB hunter was Yardstick. Yardstick. But I look like a little stick, you know. So. <laughs> What kind of truck was it? I had, I had a little team international. I didn't have no high dollar. <laughs> little 318 Cummins with a sleeper in it. Matter of fact, I had two kids out of it. Well, I did. My wife had two kids out of that truck. <laughs> and they all, a man always said I had two kids. You ain't never had no kids, son. Uh, it's a woman. <laughs> but they always said, I had 10 kids. No, you had it. You helped make 10 kids. And you don't even know if you made them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> might be the milkman. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody really knows except the woman. Scaffold up there. I'll park everything back in. This is good structural gray. So I'm using a cheaper mud today because that's what I got, which is it's, it's way more real strong. It's type S. Type S mud is mm -hmm. structural. This mud yesterday was the same thing, structural. It's just. More expensive. more expensive and you'll see i'll step out with it as i go out because i'm up i'm above the box you know what i'm saying <laughs> anytime you're above the box you can step out with it but if you're not above the box you don't want to step out with it. and that's all you do now i'll break that out just lock things in the biggest thing is being able to lock things in and if you can't lock them in you ain't really that good at it Cause the fireplace is something you don't want to play with. I don't need houses. Well, they're never gonna see it. Well, they're never gonna see it, but it's something ain't happening right. I mean, I'm gonna make right. sure it's right if something I do. Like I mean, start with, they tell you. I learned from John Clemens. <coughs> he said, son, I don't care what you do, but you better cut no damn corners. I said, don't worry about it. I ain't cut no corners. I do it right first. I ain't never had a problem with him since. <laughs> you don't mess up on he don't mind paying you, but you got to do the right thing. I don't let everybody know it, you know. And the thing is, you see my throat's closing in now. This thing will never drop. And the reason being, everything locks in. That's right. Oh, right look what you did. Everything locks in good, and all you do is you lock in stuff. You make sure everything's locked in good. Mud. Yeah, I need some more. Oh, okay. Can this side, so we can Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and now see, I'm about to get it to work. I'm really going to do the trick for them now. After dinner, I'll really come here and make this thing beautiful. Thing that is. My damper, you see my damper? I don't think he's got it over here, but I got a damper going up here. <laughs> it won't go until I get about this high. And then the damper, at least three to nine or 10 inches above this. Uh, and then everything's perfect. It's just, basically it's just stacking up, man. I'm not do it. I'm gonna talk about, the, there's a flu right there. Yeah. What, when are you gonna cut that one off? I will put that in when I get about this high. Three or four feet above this, four feet above this. This is about right there. That flu will start right there. And I'll just, what's gonna happen now is, is these are gonna come up slow until, until it gets to a 12 or 12, which you, it ain't far from 12 or 12 there. It's like 30 inches right there. So it's not, it's gonna come up real slow. Some of them are real big boxes, they go real slow. But this here's gonna almost be a straight slow to a uh, 12 or 12. And that gives you enough inches. That gives you about 30 inches over what you need for this box. Um, really a nine by eight would do it, but nine by eight is real small, you know what I'm saying? It's, uh, it don't hurt nothing to go a little bigger. You don't want to go too small. Um, if you go 30 inches over so, you're fine on any kind of box. Um, and that's what we got there. And the way you do your measurements on that is, the box is, is it how you figure your flu is, is whatever the opening is on this opening, if it's 28 inches by 28 inches, that's 740 inches. 10% of that is like uh, 73, 78 inches. Um, 
So a flu right there, 12 by 12, uh, 10 by 10 is 100 inches. So see, so you got like 28 inches over in that flu, which that works. If you had it small, it wouldn't work. So, and that's what people go wrong with these big fireplaces. They don't put the right size flu in them. And if you, like these big fireplaces over here, I got 16 by 16s in them. And if you put a 12 by 16 or 13 by 16, it'd been too small of a draw. Because the box is like a 48 inch box with 36. So if you said 48 by 36, you got something like 1200 some inches. So you gotta have more flu, you know? It's just different things. As you do it in time, you learn it. It's like anything else. Vent spaces, everything don't get filled up. The reason being, make sure you got this kind of move a little bit. You don't want to uh, be sure that going to tight it cracks. You know, you want something to have a little bit of fluctuation for the heat. And the heat won't go no further past that because it's a void. So you need to get right in, won't go no further. Then you got like a two inch brick on here. So you got six inches before you get that void. Then you got another void. These two voids would be open. That keeps everything from here from ever cracking, nothing ever crack, because the heat expands and it's got enough expansion in there. Rumford. Yeah, I do a lot of those. I have done those. And those, to me, that's a better fireplace than any fireplace. And the reason being, they don't, they're real shallow. They're only about 12 inches deep and they're real wide but the back's only like 12 inches also or 15 inches and what they do is they use them up north and why they do them up north is because they throw out more heat in the carolina box this is basically like a carolina box they don't have they don't really throw out the heat like a rumpard would a rumpard the back of it it goes it, it'd be like 16 or 15 inches in the back and it'd be real wide in the front like three foot in the front and it'd go way in real way in and they're only about 12, 15 inches deep. But as you go up with the back and you come up this way, it widens out because your back is coming out. And you and then your whole when you do a rumpford, and the way you do your dampers is uh you don't need a damper in a rumpard. You can have a top damper with a cable. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is because a true rumpard is like a five-inch trough across the whole front of it. It's a, and it, you know, it all goes into that five inch trough and about five, six inches wide, and then it goes into a big, big dump throat. Cause it goes in and hits that blue wall here, kicks back into a dump throat. And the throat's got to be a four inch throat, four foot high also. Everything's four foot high, mm -hmm. four, to five, four to five feet. You don't want to choke it down no less than that. Um, so if you get three and a half, so it may not draw right. But four is the ticket I've always been learned. That's why I say it four. Uh, some people might do three, you know, I don't know. It's whoever builds them. But I was taught four. Um, but I like a rumpkin. They're the better fireplaces. But this, these are here for looks. You know, you got a little fire going, looks good. They ain't throwing no heat out. I mean, they do throw a little bit out. But if you want something to throw out, you build a rumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> you go in. And that's a 30. See, this size box is ready for, if this was an ice return, it'd be ready for like a 24 inch damper. Mm -hmm. Being this is not an ice return, we're doing a regular box, we go with a 30 inch damper. And the reason being, because if you look at the inches there, it's about like six, seven inches by about 20 inches. You time those inches up, you got your 100 square inches for your throat. You see what I'm saying? That makes your, that makes that opening there the same as that flute. So it makes it draw right. So I got to at least get three block high, then I'll set that flute. Because the flute is two feet, see? And uh, two foot's right there. So see, three block would hide it. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is, I do my easy, my work back here first while I get my stuff in my way, so I can walk up and down here, you mm -hmm. know, and put it all together. Mm -hmm. Then I'll step down and I'll put this stuff in. Then I'll put this in. But this goes in first. Uh, Cause I, I don't, I wanna get my clearance from my wood, which is here, you know what I'm saying? And I don't wanna be leaning over there doing it, you know? Yeah. So what I'll do is I do that there down to it. I let my mud set up and you just lay it all in there. Your throat's gonna go in there now. Now fill in the side. Everything will be everything will be harder than cement. When it gets when it gets heated up, it really gets hard. And basically, I'll do the same thing. This I'm trying to keep it to where I can come back. You got, you got to be two inches away from the wood. Yeah, if you got an inspector coming up and checking his house out, and they will be, then you better be what it's supposed to be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you don't, you in trouble. So I'll just do it by what the code has got to be, and that way I don't have no problems with nobody. The only thing gets you around these blocks, these line blocks, 
and if the block is if the block is uh snagged up it will not pull so you got to make sure it's not snagged and that's some of the time you got to be kind of good at this stuff man. just know how to hook it up for one thing um and then another thing is doing it what I do is I say a block time. If it don't hook up, that block's broke. I'll set a block on top of that block. Like that. And I'll put something there so my line block will hold. Hey, a little bit. Raise that line block up for me. Ain't no good to do it. You gotta know how to grab it. It says a top and a bottom to a block. See how the top is? The, the bottom is uh, narrower. See it? And the reason I got the top part is so I can grab it with one hand, pick it up. And you set it in place with one hand. So your trial is always, you got to go to work there. You can't just pick the bottle with two hands and then grab your trial. And I tell you, I said, you can go back to it, but if you want some good crabs, you get some ES crabs. Okay. And so he can tell you the fat boys. You set that one hand, lay that block. You know, there's no uh, mud on the outside there. Well, that's why I'm stepping back. I ain't laying that over there. Uh, thing it is, that there stays open. Oh, so, oh, it's gonna be a little yeah, I got opening on that side. Well, no, the stuck will hide it. Oh, okay. See, I'm already, I'm already down a little enough for it, but my two inches got to be away from that beam. I can't be against that beam. Right. If I am, I'm wrong. So, and what we do is we pull these sails full. These sails right here, from here, from here, mm -hmm. these three right here, down will be poured full. Over there don't have to be. Mm -hmm. These do because it's on the face of the fireplace. And we'll do that. A half inch, an inch, I don't think a house is gonna swing no two inches, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if a house did swing two inches, you'd want it to be there, you know what I'm saying? You'd want to have that turn. I do the same thing on all the big ones up top in that big house. They all two inch clearance over here. I never put nothing less than two inches. And that's just something I've been doing all the time. And that's what the code is. But you have to do what the code says. If you don't, you ain't going right. And there is inspectors. And they will inspect your work. But once they see your work a few times, and they know how you're going to put it in, they still will come back and check you. But they don't check you as hard. And, and also... I'll show you something else I'm doing. I'm staying with bond from a block. Okay? I'm not going over bond. Uh -huh. This is halfway to block, halfway that way. Mm -hmm. okay. That's why I told him to cut it that length. I didn't want to get too long with it. Two inches. Huh? Two inches, exactly. <laughs> yeah, because I already knew where it was yeah. at. You see what I'm saying? See, I, I, I study it before I get there. So when I start something, I already know what I got to do with mine. You know what I'm saying? All I got to do is make sure I check it. Two inches, yeah. <laughs> so the inspector can't say. What you gotta do on uh, uh, and I'll have to mud it in, you know. But I ain't gonna mud it now. But I'll pick it up at that with your hands. You need clean it? You gotta be pretty strong. Up. There it is. I do it just like it. Have you bought the cap for the whole thing at the top no, yet? No, I'm gonna make the cap. Oh, you are? I'm gonna build a cap. Is that gonna be the like two, like more beyond, but two do arches? I'm gonna do one arch and those two circles in it. Like two circles in them uh -huh. and circles on the side. You see your trial Put that same cap on the top. Then they'll come back on the beam. Is that impressive or what? I can still catch hey, and don't even have All you gotta do is draw it. That's impressive, man. <laughs> Uh, this slate roof right here, this slate roof's gonna be on here, right? It'll be a slate roof. We'll have a two inch pocket in here. It's gotta be two inch clearance on all woodwork, up and down, you know, top and bottom. And then what we do is, the slate's gonna be on here, and also the slate will be on this slope. The slate will be on this slope all the way to here. And it's gonna stay the same slope like the roof line is. This is two different levels, makes it look good, but you don't want it to be on the same level because it's something to crack. Yeah. You gotta crack joint. Also, they got nothing but flashing on it. So that's why we went up a little bucket. Uh, so Joel drew it, which he done real good. So it goes out across there. 
And then go there and go that same angle and sit you right here. Yeah. And lay them on there and pull all this full. All this gets pulled full. And that's going to be that right there. All right. This is going up about four more block high. About this high. 32 inches. When we get this high and it's always bopped all the way around, I'm going to take it and I'm going to farm a farm, like, almost like the cats I've done over there. But I'm going to farm it with three little dog houses in it. No, two dog houses on this side and one's on the end. There'll be one on this end, one on that end, two on this side, and two on that side. And I'm going to make it, it's going to be beautiful. It's the